Hi, it's Wave, and for the longest time, I've never been interested in getting an e-reader. Because I never saw the point. I remember in middle school, my classmate had one of the older, or one of the, like the newer models of the Kindle. It was the one that had the, um, what was it, like about like this long or something, and then it had the keyboard on the bottom. And I never understood the purpose of it except for reading of course but then I thought what's the point of having it when you can just use an iPad or a tablet that can do so much more and for the price value as well so 10 years later uh, my mom was asking about a Kindle because her friend had one and it's around the same time where I was having issues with my eyes to where that reading the iPad for so long just got me tired and drowsy like I couldn't even read for like five minutes before I ended up falling asleep and I was not enjoying reading and I read so much so it was very frustrating and also since I like to read in bed quite often I would just have like the uh, iPad uh, either on my lap or like lay down beside and because it's so long it just kind of falls down and it's just very uncomfortable to use in that position so I do the following of researching for my mom like I said and then I started to notice the things that I had offered and it was actually solving the issues I was currently having. And then I asked my friend if she actually owned one or what she thought of it and she literally told me, go and get it, it is worth it. So after doing more research, I uh, ended up getting the kids paperwhite version. Originally, I was going to go for the Kindle signature because it had 32 gigabytes and since I am a big time bookworm and all that, I wanted to have something that can hold all my books because I'm like decluttering at the moment and I just want less stuff in my room so digital was actually made more sense and because I owned the new color for so many years, I thought I maxed out the 16 gigabytes and it turns out that my SD card never um, transferring my books. It just wasn't compatible. I don't know why. And at this point, my new color is just like pretty much dead. So I end up going for this one. And also the thing is, um, 16 gigabytes is basically 6,000 bucks uh, digitally. If it's like 250, I think that's what Amazon said on the site. So I thought that's actually quite a bit for what I need. Plus, you can use Libby, and I use Libby quite often because um, I'm a college student and I'm broke. So I like to save money as much as I can. And another thing is, I don't read books a second time. That's the thing about me. I can read a book and I'll enjoy it, but it's never something that it makes me want to reread it again. So that's why when they offer the Libby, it feels like a good match. For Barnes & Noble, they're still working on theirs, so I have no idea if they're going to make a Libby in the future with it or not. But Amazon basically wins out of every category. This is the one that I got. It's the, the reindeer with the forest. And in the back, there's actually a bunny right there. I didn't notice that until like a week later. I was originally going to go for the, the black one, but they actually got rid of that one. And a month before, they actually hijacked the prices with the ads. And then it got rid of the ads when for when it came to Prime Day, and I guess because everyone was just buying the kids one because it was a lot cheaper and you got more stuff for it than versus the original one. Of course, they did hijack up this price, but on Prime, it was the lowest it's actually ever been. When I was doing the research, I knew already that I wanted to get rid of the ads because I think they're stupid. The whole point of e-reader is just to read. There shouldn't be ads on it. Now you can have like, say, ads in the, what should we call it, the Kindle store and all that, like the recommendations, that's okay, but it shouldn't be on the home screen just to swipe it and then go to the main thing. You should just honestly just click and then go back to reading. So I knew like that was going to bother me, so I knew I was going to fork in the extra 20 bucks. So I was looking at all the models, um, going for the signature, but as I was studying more of the models, I discovered that they had the kids version so I so for kicks and giggles I looked at the models and I discovered that the kids version was literally the same thing as the regular Kindle 
except it has the one year kid subscription called Amazon Kids Plus and you had to activate that first before you can even open up the homepage and all that. I thought that, hey, I want the Kindle Limited to try in the future, but for the kids model that was cheaper and all that, I might also go for that. And also read middle grade books because I haven't read those in so long and I'm pretty sure there's some of them that I never got the chance to read and they're on my bucket list. I was still undecided at that point but I told myself that if the kids paperweight goes on sale for under 120 bucks, I'll get it. And for Prime Day, they had this new policy to where that Prime members um, that were already a member to begin with actually had early access to some things. And lo and behold, one of them was the paperweight. And it was actually under 120 bucks. So mine was like, was it 104 bucks? And then with tax and all that, it came out to be 111 something. I decided to try this out for a week just to get a flow of things. Like I knew off the bat that I was mainly curious about how things work and all that and just get myself comfortable with it because I never used an e-reader before. I only used tablets and an iPad. So the first day that I got it, I got in the afternoon because the delivery guy was like really doing all his rounds and all that and it happened to be storming. So when I first opened up the tablet, it was at 56% and then by the time I got everything situated and all that, it came out to be 54%. Not a big deal. So I tasted out some of the things, like one of them was definitely um, borrowing from the library because without that it was kind of pointless. Um, that worked fine um, because I had Prime membership. I got to use the Prime reading, which they only borrow 10 books at a time. But of course you can return one and then get a new one. But they do change every month or so or something like that. Um, I haven't seen any differences uh, because they're downloaded on my uh, Kindle. I've been testing out like how to maneuver around and all that. I kind of got irritated at times because I was so used to the... Uh, Apple books and you have to be careful because if you touch it it goes like swipes to the right um, and you only get like a little section like say over here for the Kindle actually to go back or just to swipe back by the time I hit the last day which was day 7th of using it I was down to 20% I think it was or like 18% and I actually took this with me when I had to get my blood work uh, just to see like how well it did outside because I only use this indoors. I was actually surprised and happy because it did last long. And once I hit the 10% mark, that's when it started to alert me to charge it because it was actually on the saving mode, which that was actually by default that it came with. So for a week and just using it with only like 54%, well technically 44% of it, that was actually impressive to me. Because my iPad only accused it for like 4 hours before it gets like 50 or even 20% because I read so much and then it takes like a whole day for it to charge. I charged this after the first week impression of using it and it only took me like 2 hours I think. I left it at 97 or 98%. I didn't charge it all the way up to 100 So fairly fast and all that. Now there's things I wanted to mention. Um, that were odd and weird to me and I'm not sure if it's just me in the model that I got or Amazon was just being goofy, I don't know. But one of the things was I knew I had to activate the Amazon Kiss Plus description in order to use it and I noticed people were complaining about that and all that. Mine never happened. Like I still have the subscription and I can open it and activate it anytime I want and use it for the year but it sent me to the adult homepage. So I skipped out on making a kid's profile and all that. I don't know why that happened, but I was really happy because I actually want to use it for next year, the beginning of January and use it for the whole year and see if the kids plus is actually worth it or even having a Kindle for kids is actually a wise investment for them or not. As much as that was weird, I'm really thankful because from all the videos, that people talk about owning a Kindle uh, kids version. They always had to deactivate it and all that. 
um, which is very very few people actually own this and post on YouTube so I don't know what happened I still have the ads free which I'm happy about and I get to lock screen on the book cover which I really do like quite a bit I found out that they're actually um, having the ads now for the adult but for the kids profile it's not so that's really sucky. I don't know in future from our updates or if I canceled the subscription for the kids, that will happen to me as well. I don't know, but for the time being, this works as it's supposed to. Another weird thing was that I was trying to figure out what's the best font for me to read it because the one that I came with as a default, I can't remember what it was called. I tried Times New Roman, it just wasn't working either. And then it just popped up to use Brooklyn font. I never known that it had that. It popped out of nowhere. I don't know why it did that. So I did and that was actually the perfect font for me. So it's like they were, I don't know if this thing is even has a microphone because this doesn't even have um, speakers on it. So I found that odd, but at the same time grateful. Another odd thing was that for testing out for the Bluetooth, it does work but I wanted to try using the accessibility to make sure it worked and all that and it's pretty funky to where that when I try using the tutorial it would just kick me out so I don't know why that happens if you're someone that has accessibility you're not gonna like this I think that's all like the weird little things that's been going on with it uh, everything else has been fine like I noticed right away when I first uh, turned it on my eyes were very relaxed and they weren't strained at all. It does do screenshots. They don't show it on the Kindle, but if you import it on the computer, uh, you can see perfectly fine. So I'll be throwing up some pictures that I've been noticing. There's a couple of things I wanted to point out for you guys if you were curious about the longevity of the uh, Kindle. Even though I said that it lasted for the whole week, um, because I was messing around with it, I noticed like little things about it that it can go fast or not um, so I did use it um, the warm setting which you can actually schedule it on um, 7 and when you're using that um, especially for the nighttime it drops down by 2 increments at a time for the battery so that's something to keep in mind uh, the keyboard for the Kindle is kind of slow I mean, it's faster than the previous generation because my friend has that one and she even notices the difference. Um, but because I type really fast, it can't keep up with me. So that's annoying. And then usually when I type fast, I try to like, I try to hover it like the iPad so you can have the thing. It doesn't do that. You have to tap it and sometimes it doesn't register. I'm not sure it's because I'm pressing it wrong or something, but that's and it's annoying it did freeze a couple times i'm not sure it's because because there was some type of glitch in the firmware i did check to see if it was already updated or not and it was if you hit five percent on battery life it will give you like a different message and also once you hit the 10 percent mark every time you open and close it it keeps saying it over and over or if you drop down and increment it pops up the message to charge it so that gets annoying the screen will go asleep if you haven't used it for quite a bit. Like I was talking to my brother one night and I had the Kindle open because I was reading. And I think it was like 10 minutes later, I saw it just go to sleep. So it does do that. I haven't tried the PDF because um, I don't have a PDF at the moment. So I didn't test that out to see if it works or not. So here are the pros. It doesn't overheat. My iPad is notorious for it because since it's a bigger um, device and it has more power in it, um, it heats up real fast. It's a good screen size right here. And um, yeah, so it's about like my face-ish. And I was comparing it to an actual, um, what was it? A physical copy from my library. It's only off by like an inch I think it was because the book itself was big but then when I actually measure angle to the text itself it was like I said it was only an inch so basically like the Nook 
color or the new glow light that they're, that they're coming out with but of course it's more compact and smaller than an actual physical copy so it's actually pretty good size like if you have like one of um Nora Roberts or what is it Stephen King's um novels are they're more shorter like this but more compact then you enjoy the size of this you can change the font size um, so that's what I did. That way I have less um, of tapping it to move on pages, but also I can still see legibly. Easy to travel with, and because I think it's actually smaller than what I first thought, but a bit bigger as well, I can actually buy a small purse now. Because the purse I have is big enough to hold a um, iPad. But at times I don't feel like carrying that huge thing around, especially when um, I go to a theme park or something in the future, I definitely want to bring the Kindle with me. Oh, another thing is this thing's waterproof. So I do plan on getting a smaller purse, like a fanny pack. Great battery life. Even though I didn't test it out like the full battery, I will test it out uh, for the month review that I plan to do. You can carry multiple books instead of uh, several books physically. I read various content and sometimes I don't feel like reading the same book because I either want to have like uh, knowledgeable information like nonfiction, or if the book that I'm reading is kind of hard and I just kind of want to take a break from it and read something lighthearted, then I can do that. The Kindle store itself is actually pretty simple and in, uh, to the point. I have bought books on the device, just the free books that happen to be free. And of course, the prime reading, easy process and all that. I can read at night using the uh, warm temperature, so it's easier to read. I can schedule it if I wanted to, which I have. I can make my own collections, which that's pretty nice because I like to keep things organized. That way, if I want to read like a genre or just like read middle grade or some type of um, category, I can do that easily. And also because I read quite a lot and have a lot of books stored up right now. I think I have like 40 books in total, I think, including the uh, books I brought from Libby and Prime Reading. Um, it's really helpful to sort it out and I actually did that on the device and not on the computer. Now, the cons, because there's always going to be cons to everything. There was no um, bookmark like you have on the app version on your phone. So I found that annoying because they didn't have the icon at all for it. But what you could do is like tap on it and then it can actually show you how many you have. The speech text wasn't easy, which has basically the accessibility thing. I did try with my headphones that were actually semi-broken. So I will have to try that again with new ones for the month review update and see how that goes. Because this is made with ink technology, you're not gonna have like an iPad to where you can follow along while hearing the audio and have highlighted while it's going through the book. If you purchase the audio with the book, you can definitely do that on the app. There's no page count that I've noticed, like they're supposed to, but there wasn't on mine that I have. Maybe in an update they'll fix that or something. Uh, that's just something that I noticed. There's no progress bar. I know the Kobo does that and I actually prefer that. Um, to see visually because I'm a visual person and not just um, page unless it gives me like um, say like 7 out of 125 pages or something like that then that actually would have been better that way I want to keep on looking at the contents and see which I'm at and how long even though it does give the percentages on the right side sometimes I just don't care for it because it does the whole thing and I don't read the acknowledgements or any extra things. I just go up to the last chapter or the epilogue and then I just call it complete in my book. There's no LED scheduling like the warm temperature. Uh, I didn't understand that when I purchased it, but then I seen it as like, oh, okay, this is what they meant. Cause the signature actually has the scheduling of the LED as well as the warm light. So it's not really a big deal, but at nighttime I would have to dial up the temperature and all that. Uh, I haven't tried the dark mode actually. So in the next month, I'll actually try it and let you know how I feel about it and all. Libby's not included in the interface. Kobo does, 
but Amazon doesn't so of course Amazon wants to sell books and all that so what happens if your phone dies or you don't have access to a tablet to download the book that you want and you're kind of stuck because you can't do it and you have to wait until you get home to charge your phone or have access to the computer to download the book and then transfer it onto Kindle. That's kind of annoying because the whole point of the Kindle is just to have everything on it. Sometimes Amazon doesn't have every book on their site. Like when it comes to like something like a rare or like an old book, they won't sell it because they see no point. Unless it's like a classic literature book, then they'll have it. But I researched books a couple times on Amazon and they didn't have it. But on the Libby with my library, they do. And it was Kindle formatted. So I found that interesting. But it also backs on my point of having Libby on the device itself. Another con is that they don't have Hoopla or Freeding. Now Hoopla is also free with a library card, but they do offer, um, what is it? Uh, audiobooks ebooks and other things like music, comics, TV shows, uh, courses, and uh, movies which is a great and all that because I actually use it quite a bit even though they only give you 10 borrows a month now if you use the flex version it actually gives you additional 10 but that's only for anything that has flex in it um, flex borrow I think it's called and the thing is, some books that I want to read either are not on Amazon or not on Libby, but they have it on Hoopla with my library card. I don't know why the library card does that, but it's just something that I have to access in the future or something. But it is what it is. So if they were to install that just for the ebooks only, that would be great. Um, reading is also similar to Libby. Of course, there's more limitations because Libby has more access to whatever um, public library you have access to, but they also have the same thing where one or two books may be on the Freeding app and not on Libby or Hoopla at all. And I know that someone on Amazon uh, made a complaint that their library switched from Libby to Freeding, so their Kindle basically became obsolete to them because they couldn't borrow books like they wanted to because they don't have Freeding installed. So if they actually change that, that will be awesome. So this is my first impressions of using the Kindle. As I mentioned over and over, I will do a month update review to see how my thoughts have changed. Maybe they'll update the firmware and we have more stuff to it. Or it could be glitchy, who knows. As of right now, I'm really happy with this purchase. I get to enjoy reading again like I wanted to while also discover new authors because there's some authors that uh, give out freebies so I actually downloaded so many of them and I get to discover um, hidden gems as well. If you subscribe to my newsletter, uh, my blog will show like everything I've been up to at this point or currently working on for challenges and all that. So for next year, I will activate the kids subscription and will document on my blog to see what I've been reading, how I like the kids profile and all that. And also educate parents if they're actually interested in owning one of these for their kids. Let me know down below if you own the kids version as well. And what are your thoughts? Do you use it with your kids or do you use it with multiple people or do you use it for yourself? Because that's what I use, only for me. In the meantime, take care of yourselves and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!